That guy right there. It's all about Peke and Soez in Fnatic for me. They always are so aggressive, always tend to have a combo of champions that they can use together. And straight away, we've seen some key champions being banned out this time. Interesting that Twisted Fate is banned out by Gambit, because as we mentioned, in Tenerife, when these guys played, Twisted Fate was actually let through the entire pick burn phase. Yeah, but he's a champion that Peke, we've seen time and time again, use. I mean, yeah. he's a split push he's master anyway. Yeah. So, you now the fact is, Twisted Fate can make that life a little bit easier. Cassid in another one for X Peke band out there. Uh, obviously, taking out Zed, taking out the Udia, who Diamond has really brought effectively to the table. Yeah, Spirit Guardian was available, I think, for this one as well. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. A three. Point nine. Yeah, of course it yeah. is. Of course it is. What am I on about? Get out and buy it, guys. Straight away. That's what you need to do. <laughs> At least being taken away. They don't want Soaz on that one. He has got a very high win rate on that champion. Only really in the summer split do you start to finally lose on that champion as yeah. well. And Thresh being the final ban. So, is Zona going to be that first insta-lock pick for Gambit? Or will it be Shen? Well, it's going to be Sona, I think. Be Sona. Uh, you know, the fact is that Yellowstar himself has played most of his games on Sona, won three out of the four that he's brought to the table. As you said, mm. Gambit just loves Sona in their team. Voidal, not going to be any exception to that rule. He's, uh, he's kind of the, the requirement for Gambit. Do you speak Russian? Do you play Sona? In any <laughs> of those two uh, orders, I'm not Take sure which one box. really comes first on that. Uh, but that, of course, left the likes of Shen open, which Soaz will quite happily, I say quite happily take. He's been quite vocal about how he doesn't even he like it. playing Shen. So mm. you know, sometimes you have to take one for the team, and it seems like that's going to happen here today. Um, and then picking up the Varus for Pushu, again, most played champion for him. Yeah, team choice, it's interesting. He was, like you say, he was very vocal about it last time around, and we, we prodded and poked him on it <laughs> during our player meetings, and he just smiled and <laughs> didn't react. I was like, what do you put it on Facebook? He won't tell me. But no, he tells you guys, the fans, Karma being selected. Oh my wow. God, it's been locked in. What the hell is about to happen? Well, the funny thing is we saw Karma being hovered over mm. in Tenerife a couple of times, and I think no one was fully expecting that to go through here, but you saw Alex Itch, was just like, <laughs> picked Karma, what up? <laughs> uh, and also we've got the Ash coming in for Genja. He's going to build a tier, and he's going to try and make Fnatic cry. Diamond just glancing at the camera, he's like, what up? I got this. <laughs> so I wonder who's going to play this. Is it going to be Alex in that mid lane? Will it be... Jungle Karma Diamond, was it? Is he going to pull something out or are we going to see something else coming out from Fnatic this time around? Aatrox and Blitzcrank getting locked in. What the hell? Guys, get everyone watching this match. I don't know what's going on. Well, the predictions are pretty much out of the window at this yes. point, I think. I'm not even going to refer to my statistics. 50 about 50. Most players. <laughs> it's 50 50. Anything can happen statistically. So, you know, that's what they're going with for this one. That Aatrox coming in with a Blitzcrank. Could be Aatrox jungle again, could be Soaz with Aatrox, could put Shen in the jungle. We'll have to see about how they uh, switch that one around here as Gambit move on to their last pick. So we've got a bottom lane set in stone there at least. That's what we can talk about here from Gambit, the Ash and Sona, a lane which Gambit are very familiar with. Now, this Karma we're expecting, I suppose, to go into the mid lane with uh, Alex Itch, but these last two picks obviously going to be dictating that one as we see a Zac being hovered over with a Kale. <laughs> where is everything going right now? So what? this this is the point, Demon, where oh. we need our analyst uh, sat well, this, in between us. This ah, there we okay, go. Now we know it. what's happening. Now we know what's happening. So Diamond's going to be playing Evelyn. That's for cer certain. But Kale could be top or middle. We don't know which way it's going to go. And really, I've never seen Alex on a LCS. He's probably played it in solo queue, guys, or on his stream or whatever. Darian, we don't know because he doesn't tend to stream. So he, without like digging down really getting down and dirty on what champions he's been playing lately, but I don't know what's going on here. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Timo locked in now, but I don't think that's going to happen. If it did, I think the internet may explode. That would be the icing on the cake for this one. If uh, Yellowstar, who's been become famous for his uh, troll selections up until now, until he actually locks in the champion that he wants, uh, which in this uh -huh. case, Lissandra makes a lot of sense. We talked about earlier, banned out in game number one, but has a very, very high win percentage uh, in the mid 80s for that one. So it wouldn't be a surprise for me whatsoever to see this Lissandra being locked in for Fnatic. And Peke was unstoppable on it last week. He yeah. actually, his only death came when he, I think he dived on the fountain at the end. They were 8 on 7 in uh, one of the matches. And even against Gambit, I think he did very well on that champion. Well, it may have been Gambit that he did the 8 on 7 on. I'm trying to think which game it was. They kind of all blend into one when you get to a certain age. 
A certain age, yeah. Or, or, or a that. certain amount of games in a season. I was gonna try and dig you out of that yeah, hole, but no, you went. You I pulled put the myself age in the hole. It's all so fine. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dig you out of that one. You can keep it in there. So, so what is happening right now? Where are we going with this one? The switches are coming through here. There's teleport currently on Peke, but Alex and Diamond. Uh, uh, it's Diamond and Darian are gonna switch around. Uh, actually, saying that, <laughs> no, it's gonna change. It's gonna change. That's gonna be Diamond on Evelyn. I'm almost certain of it. We wanna. We wanna stay on this screen as long as possible because I don't. I wanna know what the hell is gonna happen here. Yeah, uh, uh, there's sometimes where these last second changes really have an impact on the game, and this is certainly one of them. Uh, as we see switches uh, going in there, uh, but we're gonna move away nonetheless, and uh, we'll just tell you guys in a little while what happened. Well, we'll all be surprised when it loads up, won't we? Because we don't get to see it either right now. But the surprise is certainly gonna be on the faces of. Fanatic, are they expecting the karma to come through? That's the question, and I just don't know, honestly. So, well, I don't think Fanatic really know either how this one is uh, actually going to be going. So, really exciting game coming up, that's for sure. I don't think we quite expected the picks that have been pulled out here on either side for, uh, especially for Gambit, obviously, uh, bringing out that karma into this one, which, as I said, has been hovered over a few times. Uh, I, I forget who it was who talked about the fact that he wanted to play karma and the rest of the team were like, nah, let's not do that. Let's uh, you know, be a bit more standard with things. And, uh, but this time, Alex bringing that one out, or certainly Gambit bringing that one out. As you said, we're going to find out in just a couple of moments as to exactly where that karma has landed on the Gambit side. You can see Fnatic there. So as, so look, he's, he's, that's his I'm playing Chen face, I believe. <laughs> I, I don't know. Honestly, he's got a face like a smacked ass sometimes. So as, you, you look at the All-Stars, and actually I remember distinctly while we were there, he won his 1v1 BPDD, and he just looked grumpy. <laughs> and that's what we, and we were just like, what? But look at this. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Diamond is on Karma Jungle. What in the hell? Okay. First pick in the EU ELCS. Thanks, oh, stat man. Thanks for the stat, <laughs> Steph. <laughs> More importantly, it's in the jungle. Well, welcome to the jungle. Diamond Prox, you are here to stay. And he he's an innovates all the time. And this time around, he's actually been known to play Sona in the jungle as well, which I have seen a number of champions, a uh, number of players using as well. But this one... It definitely caught me off guard. Yeah, I definitely wasn't expecting. I think we could have done a lot of research into this and probably not come into that conclusion that Diamond was going to bring out the uh, karma here uh, into the jungle. But let's see, Fnatic right now are going to be moving all as one unit towards this what? bottom lane. What? 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 Hey, what? Yellow Star's on Shen, so as hey. it's on Blitzcrank. When, what? What? When, when did that change around? That's that's what oh we're talking my. about in terms of the what? last second switches for this one. So it's going to be Yellow Star on Shen, and it's going to be Soaz playing Blitzcrank. Well, we'd said how unhappy he was about playing Shen, so Fnatic have just said, fine, don't play, you can play support Blitzcrank. Well, is he going to play as support Blitzcrank? Or is, we've seen him play top lane Blitzcrank before. That's the funny thing about this one. I don't so know what's happening we'll right now. We'll see how that one all works out. <laughs> Guys, anyone watching at home right now, if your friends are not watching this, get them to, because this is just, well, there's words I can, can't use on air, and this is definitely one of them, because it's a pretty wild one. And we've seen some fantastic Mad Life play this morning. Are we gonna see some amazing SOAS support play today? Well, we're gonna find out how he is. Diamond starting off here with that blue buff. Gone for the uh, point in his Q, first of all, that inner flame to start things off. Finite gonna be kicking his blue buff off as well. So that's the start that we're getting from these two. Really interested to see what Diamond plans here, whether he's, whether he's practiced something at these early levels to get involved. We can see that Cyanide actually going in for the red buff here. Soaz comes down as well. And Soaz is playing support this game, by the way, guys, as we are going to see them diving in towards Diamond. Soaz not quite got the positioning to get the grab, but Diamond is very, very low from this one. There's a flash grab. First blood comes down for Soaz. First time we've seen him in the support role here, and he gets a blue buff and says, thank you very much. First blood straight away, and that was a great, great start. So Fnatic going for the invade. Diamond tries to pull something new out. And it actually backfires by a great shock encounter. And we talked about it at the start of the show that you could throw these gambles, these changes to Fnatic, and they react in kind. And they kind of countered and caught 
Gambit out once again by doing a complete roster change <laughs> while they're in picks and bands. So I'm not sure if they've been practicing this, the whole, you know, Soaz is now our support despite winning the title as the best top laner in the world. Let's get him Blitzcrank <laughs> and throw him down in the bottom lane uh, with Pushu. So incredible, incredible start to this one. We can see that Gambit now trying to take away the red buff of Fnatic after losing that one to Cyanide. Peke is coming around for this one. And we're going to see who's going to be able to uh, pick this one up. Smite not available for Cyanide which is definitely a problem. He dives in on top of Diamond. And look at the damage that he's getting down from this one. He's got his passive, let's not forget. Diamond is actually walking away. Here comes Alex, flashes in. Can he get the final blow off? The slow comes down. He's running, he's gonna jump, but he jumped towards Voidel, who will pick up the kill. And now Peke in all kinds of trouble. He flashes over the wall. And there's Voidel again. He's got him, he's gone too far. He's gone far too he's far. He got the kill though. The yellow star gets him at the end. I'm sticking by the statement. WTF, Demon. <laughs> WTF, indeed. Voidal, why well, you're Voidal? Show, just shows full aggression there. His first game, Edward is gone. Dark has been a support man, and now Voidal comes in and picks himself up a double kill. It's something in the blood in the Russians, maybe. Well, despite the fact he's Estonian, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever, you speak Russian, you go crazy aggressive as support, and sure enough, a two kills gets him a Philo Stone off the bat. So... Darian on Evelyn, something that we've not touched on, but the fact is that we've not seen him playing Evelyn before in the LCS, so that's another bit of a change. But it's all a change, really. I mean, there's not many standard roles in this game going on right now. Um, it's definitely caught us by surprise, and as Demon said, make sure you get your friends tuning into this one, because we're in for a bit of a crazy matchup, I think, to say the least. A bit of a crazy matchup. We haven't even had a chance to look at da Diamond yet to see what he's leveling up. So hopefully we'll get that on your screens at the moment because he's actually been so aggressive. We didn't get a chance to look at him. Looks like it is uh, in a flame that he's actually leveling up. So, oh, wow. Wow. I, I, ju I just... And I'm kind of a, we're both kind of a lost for words here, which doesn't happen too often, but this bottom turret is taking a lot of damage. Push you on Varus. That's something we have seen a lot of. He's doing the damage on that bottom lane. Darren's actually doing a good job of holding him off here, to be honest. Evelyn in a 2v1 lane against the Blitzcrank. That is scary stuff. You can see Push you. It's a champion that he likes a lot of. He's played it four times. Definitely managed to got good numbers on it. Diamond, though, he's coming down the bottom. He's just walked past that ward, though, so he's not as sneaky as he looks. And I think, actually, yeah, that he's not going to be sneaky at all. No, he's just kind of forcing his way in there. That ward down so is actually ramping up here. Not quite getting in range to uh, pull off a pull. Is that one? Oh, let's see. That tower, as you said, very low, and that's part of the reason why Diamond's just come across as Voidal. Going to go very, very low from this one. Cyanide jumping in, but Yellow Soul will get the kill. They get the slow on Gendra as well. He could be in trouble from this. He flashes away in the end before even thinking about having uh, the taunt coming down from Shen. Survives that on this mid lane. Alex Itch and Xpeke being a very quiet affair so far. They got involved in that top lane and stuff, but since then, it's all been back to the farm game. Yeah, we've not had really had a chance to look at it because the game's just... Just bonkers right now. But Yellowstar's actually got two kills now as well on that top lane. That's going to be scary because Yellowstar is going to be doing what Shen does best and he's going to be the split pushing. Alex Itch is taking a one there. He's going down the bottom lane, but he did just pass on a ward. The moment Fnatic step back, they're like, nope, he's going down this way. Head back towards it. They're having to duo lane at the moment down this bottom here because they're desperately trying not to lose this turret. The hook comes in on Darian. There's going to be the power fist. He's going to go down. One more shot. The ignite's going to do the job. But can they get Soaz? The passive shield, the mana shield coming out there. Teleport comes in. Peke comes in. Diamond goes down. Quickly squatted. Now Gendra's in trouble. You can see this. Red Chain the Corruption just lands to land on him. And would you believe it? Another ulti used. Yellowstar comes in with a stand united. And that's a three for zero in the bottom lane, straight up to Dragon, why not? Nope, backing off. <laughs> but I'm not going to call anything this no. game because it's Give probably up. not going to happen or the the exact opposite will probably happen from it as well. So great move by Fnatic. Shen coming down there, the teleport out of XPK. And something that we've seen him picking up more and more lately. Obviously it was Charu that really got that trend started. He's been doing that for years in the mid lane. Uh, and Peke has said that you know, that teleport is a very powerful spell if you use it right and that's certainly how you use it getting down there you've got shen there with the global to join you as well perfect perfect play coming out of fanatic see that diamond just doing that blue buff wondering if he's actually going to take this or whether alex will back off for it looks like he's got it he took it looks like he took it so 
no surprise. He is playing Karma. He kind of needs it, and he's actually fell behind in the jungle. Well, that's, tell a lie. That's, that, that's a lie. It's a straight-out lie. He's actually even in the jungle because Sinai's been actually roaming and helping out as much as possible as well. Look at Genja. Totally out of position. Where the hell is he going? Zawas is going to go in there. Power fist up the backside. Pushu comes around. He gets hooked straight back in there. Piercing arrow. And that was an easy done deal. you got to wonder, really, how Genja actually got so far out of position there for a one of the most passive AD carries in the game. Yeah, that was uh, not something that we used to seeing from Genja, to be honest. I mean, yeah, like you said, very, very passive, but getting caught so far up lane like that is not something we come to expect. That is going to be turret number one in this game, and so has our new Fnatic support, at least for this game. Who knows really what's going on with that one? He's charging in here, and look at Voidal. Oh. He is in all kinds of trouble as well. Who are they going to go for? They're going to go for the rare. They're going to go for the golem from that one, actually. As Pushu now being chased down by Diamond as he throws down the chain of corruption. So has coming in from this one as well. But there is Darian. They knocked the what about the Eve? He's come sneaking in and now Soaz in trouble. Flashes off towards the top side. Alex Hitch is going to come down from this one. Soaz changes pass. And what's he going to go for? Knocks Darren in the air. His mana barrier gets popped, but he is still steaming oh. up. There's the arrow from downtown. And he's finished off in the end by Darren. Good turnaround from Gambit. And the shutdown actually for Darren there. He's already picked up 432 gold because he was 3 0 1 just before that. Because Soaz, he'd been on a bit of a kill spree of his own, taking away those kills. What a game. What is going Going on, I don't know. Felix Stone picked up by both supports this time around. We do see the site zone finally completed by Soaz as well, but we haven't had chance to really talk about the lanes matchups because they've just what been lanes? switching around all over the place. It's seven four in kills so far. Such a contrast to 12-12 game that lasted nearly an hour between EG and NIP, which kind of surprised us that NIP turned it around and won it. But I actually couldn't call this one right now. Fnatic have the gold lead, they have the tower lead, and they have the kill lead. But honestly. The game is that wide open and wild that anything could happen right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see something bonkers continuing to happen as the game progresses. No, certainly wouldn't. Uh, this game is just calling for crazy action as Yellow Star going to go in on towards Darien. Not going to be able to catch that Eve though. Just pops the W and says, nope, not going to be able to chase me down. But he doesn't. he's doing decent amounts of damage here. I mean, look what he's built up all towards that Sunfire Cape here early on. A Cyanide and the bottom lane of Fnatic, which is now so as apparently uh, got a new dragon. Yeah, it's just, it's actually keeping our camera on the toes as well because it definitely plays with your mind when those fingers change around. We talk about Soaz, he'd be looking for the top lane and he's not there. Dragon, though, first one of the game picked up by Fnatic this time. Gambit normally have such good control over that Dragon. They're not going to be happy about losing that. And it continues the gold slide in Fnatic's favor. You can see it's 3,500 gold already. That's a big, big lead being built up just 12 minutes into this game, 11 minutes sorry, into this game. And in terms of gold, you can look across the players as it's not a massive difference. The AD carries is where really it counts. That's the 1,000 gold difference and the two top laners who are now finally facing off against each other. Yellowstar's doing a fantastic job as top laner. And maybe this is something they had in mind when the changes came through. Who knows? Or whether they've just been training so hard for it this week. All I've really seen from the Fnatic streams is simply Cyanide being dropped this week. <laughs> they, they've certainly done that. and They've kind of done it around uh, towards... I think this time in We've here. Been trolled. Uh, I'm really interested to hear actually from Fnatic after the game as to what the whole decision making and uh, whether this was actually a planned change because it really wouldn't surprise me if it was just an on the fly thing going down. Right now, Cyanide is headed to this top lane. Diamond is going to be camping in that top lane as the uh, uh, taunt goes down on towards Darien. He's lost a lot of health. Well, look at Yellowstar. He's dropping as well, but Darien goes down. Yellowstar's managed to escape. Here comes the uh, teleport coming out of Xpeke. Can they get in range here for him to get his ultimate off? There's the slow, and that's pretty much the kill. Actually, Cyanide did have his passive up there as well, which is why he had no problem with chasing. Meanwhile, we see Alex Hitch go down, both Soaz and Pushu combining for that one. And that's a three for nothing for Fnatic again. This game is just crazy, and Fnatic continue the chaos. It's actually catching Gambit out of place, and so many times the ganks are working now for Fnatic. They're just piling on the aggression, continuing to just really go where they please, and Cyanide now actually putting it doing a great Aatrox in jungle, honestly. This is the second Aatrox in jungle we've seen of the day, so maybe it's going to be flavor of the week, it seems, but uh, Fnatic are looking so, so good here, and Gambit, despite the fact they pulled in this new support, Voidal, who picked up those two kills early on, seems to be floundering a little, and with Darian on Evelyn, Evelyn's a champion that has to get going, and it's starting to struggle, and 
Simply put, can't go really in a one-on-one -on -one against Yellow Star now because he's got that Sunfire Cape already built out there. And Fnatic, look at them. They've got that Bloodthirst on their AD carry. He's at 3-1-2. Genji's gone for that Tier of the Goddess again. Despite the changes, he still insists on going for it. The hook comes in. Alex gets caught once again. And just like that, Pushu takes him down. Yeah, had no ultimate available as Peke gets hit by the arrow. He's taking turret hits as well, but not going to be too scary for him. He just claws his way out of there. And Fnatic can keep up the pressure here with Cyanide in this middle lane. There's only two men there for Fnatic. As you mentioned, Bloodthirst are already done there for Pushu. They decide in the end they'll play it safe for 11-4 up in kills. 15 kills in less than 15 minutes. A stark contrast to the last game. As you said, I think First Blood only came in at about 11 and a half, 12 minutes in that one. And so, really, these teams fighting to the death for this top place right now. Genji using the hawk shot there on Yellowstar, but Yellowstar has not backed off from this one. He's got Soaz with him, who seems to be landing every hook he throws out there. There's another hook. He lands on the red buff. This time they're going to take that one away. Pushu's going to be the focus for it. The little lizard's coming around, and Genji doesn't want to get involved. And that red buff has been taken. Blue buff will be picked up by Peke as well. Fnatic in full control, and Darian, he's out of position. Where are you going to go? Nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much it is exactly where he's going at this point. Peke gonna come in from the side, takes the damage onto him. Darian trying to put as much out as he can here, but quite frankly, you're not escaping that one. Did decent damage, got half of Peke's health down, but half is not 100%, and that's what you need to escape from that scenario. But as you said, just completely out of position there. And there's four members of Fnatic. They're looking to keep the chaos reigning. And Genja and Voidler are going to be the focus of the target. Soaz comes around again. He's landed every hook so far. I seem to have seen him throwing out and doesn't seem to be letting up. Diamond's trying to put pressure on the middle lane. Alex Itch on that top lane. But it's Fnatic. They have four members now on this bottom. Yellowstar's backing off. So they're just going to have a three-man push down here. I don't think he's going to get caught out. No, nope. it's Yellowstar's going to stick around. They're taking the inner turret. They're going to be happy with that one. Push you back in the mid lane. He stopped Diamond. And now it's just the top lane. That's the only one they're losing. But Fnatic are going to keep going. on going. Yeah, why not? I mean, there's not really a reaction of this to this from Gambit. Fnatic going to head northwards through the Gambit jungle right now and hope to catch someone off. They've got Soaz at the front who won't be scared of going in between those two turrets there for a bit of a look. Alex did take down the first turret of Gambit's game here in the top lane, but everything else is pushing against them. We've got Cyanide pushing this mid lane out. That's four men from Fnatic to take down the final outer turret. Well, they have got Pushu on the team, so they're starting to keep on driving forward. Piss and arrow thrown out. It's doing some damage now towards Diamond, and that turret's taking more hits. Peke just off at the oh. side, ready and waiting to launch himself across there. The next medium wave might well be the focus and he could well go for it he's spotted by a ward this time yeah they're pinged on him now they do know he's there yellow star's gone back to the top stan united is available should they die for this one and they may well go for it now this wave's pushing in okay coming around the side as you said being spotted but the piercing arrows doing great damage already from push you've got that pickaxe now added in oh, towards that last whisper almost and look at the farm difference as well Pushu is absolutely decimating Genja on that front. 143 to 95. It's two and a half thousand gold difference. Yeah, even the supports, he obviously with a 3 1 3. So as has got a big advantage, and it does look like this middle turret's going to go down. So that's going to be four 1 in turrets now to Fnatic. The gold lead, it's 7,000 gold. Just coming up to the 17 minute mark. It's a huge advantage. Dragon's up in four seconds. Fnatic roll on down there, and that's going to keep the gold lead flowing in their favor. Ordinarily, when Gambit are losing the kills, they at least keep the gold level because they get a dragon, or because they keep their farming lanes so high. But Fnatic are just dominating them across the map right now. And this is worrying signs for Gambit as well. Let's not forget that their record's really only been blemished uh, to the max, I'd say, when it comes to certain play days, is when they had Spontex in there. They lost both games on that weekend, and they can't afford it. You know, week seven out of nine here, this is a stage where they can't afford to be losing two games in a weekend. The, the pressure is absolutely on both teams. They are, of course, joint top right yeah. now. Uh, I tell a lie, Fnatic were in fifth place. But well, they're going to be up there after this game, that's for sure. But Gamma, yeah, they have to try and pick up a win. They're all trying to stretch their lead in this top lane. And top, and none of them are able to do it. NIP picked up a win, so they closed themselves in there. They were fifth, I believe, NIP yeah. were. So Fnatic, they could well set themselves at the top of the table if they win this one. Still not going to rule Gambit out, though. There's still a long way to go in this game, but they are looking so good so far. Yeah, really 
Uh, breaking the mold from what we've seen from Fnatic so far. Obviously, Soaz playing the support role. This is not just any top laner playing support role. This is a guy that at All-Stars won the battle of top laners. <laughs> you know, this is technically, as far as we could really, you know, measure it by, the best top laner in the world on paper. So, really crazy stuff. And I'll tell you what, that man, hey, Yellow Star, some big boots to fill going into the top lane to replace so as he's doing brilliantly must be something in the water in france <laughs> yeah it is the two frenchies that have switched themselves around back and going aggressive chain of corruption misses the hook misses this could be the turnaround that gambit have been looking for is it though peke dives in throws that ultimate down picks up the kill voidal goes down alex is the next focus on target he's gonna get dropped as well it's pushing that picks that one up darian comes around the back gets all of them in their ulti there has he got enough damage no he hasn't the ignite running it may take him yes he does push you with the ignite kill, actually, no, it's got to be the snipe. He hasn't got any ignite. I don't know where that came from, but nevertheless, he gets oh. the triple on Diamond with the piercing arrow. They're gonna get the turret down as well, and Fnatic with four kills for zero on a dive on the turret are looking incredible. And the thing is, that's Lissandra's power right there. You just saw it. Go into the middle of the team, put the ultimate on yourself. He's got a Zonyas as well, so you're not killing him. You just can't put damage onto him for that entire t time while his ultimate is just hammering away on you. Uh, and the fact is that Pushu is he's now 7-1-3, of course. He was 4-1-3 before that. Bloodthirster got the last whisper in there now as well. So he's just doing so, so much damage in those team fights that if you can't stop him, you're not going to be able to win a fight like like that. I had no idea what Gambit going to do. That was kind of their fight to win right there. They had a good engage. The crescendo landed <laughs> in a good place. Did Peke just fool himself there? I'm not too sure. He's like, oh, uh, where am I going with this one? Is he, is, uh, he is going to pick the blue up. I was going to say, surely he wants the blue himself. I thought, wasn't sure if he was just leaving it for someone, the way he was dilly-dallying around there. But he does manage to take it down. But that was the perfect engage for Gambit. They got the crescendo across. The arrow didn't quite time itself nicely. Darian wasn't in the fight. But he still came in, landed his ulti, the hook comes in, so has taken away the blue buff. Will he get it? Or will Diamond have to use his smite there? Look at this, they're delaying. They want to force a fight. That's what they're doing here. They want to get aggressive. No, <laughs> Diamond goes in and uses his smite. Yeah, really trying to bait that one out. You saw them trying to pull it as far back as they could there. But Fnatic right now, they know we've got positional advantage here, guys. We can start pushing through to this one. Gambit have got literally no one behind that turret right now. Gendry is trying to get away. Shen is actually fighting with Kale down in the bottom tribush here. And Yellow Star, he's a tanky beast right now. And Alex has really struggled to actually get into him. There's the taunt coming down. Peke Ooh. uses his ultimate. Maybe a bit overkill, but a kill nonetheless for uh, Peke. He is now 3-1-6 without Lissandra. A kill's a kill. Interesting play, though, because Fnatic, as you mentioned, had really good positional advantage. Look at Darian. He's actually between them doing some dirty farming. I'm not too sure it's going to quite work out, though, because Pushu and Soaz, they're continuing to keep driving forward. They have that wave, but the fact they don't have those minions, that siege minion that was just taken down by Darian there, is going to cause some problems. They can't keep pushing in that mid lane, so instead, they're just going to rotate to the bottom. And I think this, this combo of Fnatic is really hard to deal with as well because they've got a great team for just going in there and getting the fight done. They've also got the perfect, you know, opposite of that with a Blitzcrank in there to pull someone out to single a target right into the middle of the team to finish it off. So it's going to be really hard for Gambit to adapt and to be honest, figure out what Fnatic are going to do. Are they going to dive in there once Peke has that ultimate and that Zonya's both available to him and just take the fight to Gambit? Or are they going to have to keep dancing around and avoid, uh, avoiding Soaz's uh, hooks? They're going to have to keep trying to dodge him because Fnatic are not giving up on this siege because Yellowstar, he's just free farming in this top lane, continuing as a Shen should do with that Stan United available to keep on split pushing. The inner turret is going to be the focus. Nobody's peeled off from Gambit right now to deal with it because they realize this is what they have to do. They have to fight. There's going to be the arrow landing. The catch up towards Pushu. Good crescendo just as he cleansed it off, catches him down there. This could be a good fight for Gambit here. Peke's going to use his ultimate. He's going to go taken down, uses the Zonius as well, tries to troll as much as he can, but he does buy time for the rest of Gambit. Uh, Fnatic to get away from this one, but look at that in the bottom of your screen. There's the turret going down. So despite the fact they lost two kills, they still took an inner turret. Yeah, two for nothing. I think Fnatic in the grand scheme of things so far ahead in kills 
aren't too unhappy about getting that inner turret down there and losing a couple of men. This could be a bit of a difference. So this could be a bit of icing on the cake for Gambit if they can have this outer middle turret away, which they will do. Darien now being caught out here by Yellowstar. Do you escape a Shen? How do you escape a Shen? More to the point, you don't is the answer to that one. Yellowstar now on a killing spree with his Shen at 307. And he is a hero, so as popping his ultimate to get rid of those minions, hooking the last one in for good measure. And that will stop the push from Gambit. Well, where do we oh, take this it? one? No, we don't, because Beke teleports himself in there and then thought, whoop, hang on a minute, I'm 2v1. This is maybe not a best decision I've ever made in my life, but he keeps the poke on towards Alexic, and in comes Soas, power fist on towards him, and just kites him around, uses invulnerability, maybe able to get Soas down, mana shield's being dropped, Alexic is going to go down, we saw Soas go down in the process, Diamond actually goes through, takes on the dragon, tanking on towards Cyanide, gets the slow on towards Diamond, it should just be enough, uses that leash to slop him down, but here comes Pushu, Pushu should be able to close the gap on towards him piercing arrow not available he just used it we go hell of arrows comes out <laughs> perfectly on max range and catches him it's another kill for fanatic and it stretches it to 20 to 7 24 minutes gone yeah really again just a messy messy engagements coming in peke teleporting into the middle lane halfway down two guys in front of him who were then so scared of that lissandra they just backed away or at least tried to back away then you had so has come motoring down again with that blitzcrank to really lock things up he did die in the end but let's not forget he is the support it might be easy to forget he's 327 right now got the locket in there got himself an oracle got those boots and mobility to be even more annoying charging around the place and this change of plan because that's really what it is from what we can see here for Fnatic is working out so well for them as we see the arrow coming on towards yellow star he flash taunts in there for this one and Genja now in all kinds of trouble how do you escape the Shen you use your barrier first of all Alexic coming around the side yellow star now realizing hang on a minute I'm the one in trouble now I'm gonna go back towards Genja who gets the ulti out of Alexic they all survive and get the kill as well that was a little overconfident there from yeah. Yellowstar, but why not? He's almost got a Trinity Force complete. He's gone full aggression after this one. The hook on towards Diamond gets pulled in. Chain of Corruption out. Diamond gets dropped in seconds. Alex just used his ulti a moment ago to save Genja's life. It could have been useful there. And Diamond so far on Karma, it's not going so well. It's 0 6 7, but how much of that was taken from that very first blood? Oh, there's a crescendo coming out, and, well, Voidal might be in trouble himself. Peke taking a lot of damage to the ultis. There's a grab onto Alexic. He flashes away. Pushu flashes in. Peke comes in from the side, steals that one back. Darian did walk away. Voidal escapes as well, but it's another kill for Fnatic. Peke's low, but are they going to go in for that Baron? There we see a great statistic as well. If you're a Fnatic fan, at least, Peke, number one kills in the EU LCS at 104, and those four coming from this game coming from this game he's done many many kills on Lissandra it's a champion that honestly has a great win rate and it's looking like it may continue to Fnatic starting off the Baron though this is dangerous dangerous territory they have got five members around there Yellowstar just about to join in but with Darian coming in with Voidal who doesn't have Crescendo available just yet they back away probably a wise choice because Ash was there in the form of Genja who has started things off and now Gambit thinking could we start the Baron off no, 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 we can't. <laughs> the answer to that was written when that ward came down. Uh, <laughs> can't carry on with that one. Yellow saw here, 178 CS. As you said, the workings of that Trinity Force coming out for him as well. There's a blue buff just spawned for X Peke as well. And that Lissandra who's now got that Abyssal Scepter in on top of the Zonias from a little bit earlier on. So let's have a look if we get, yeah, we've got a minute of quiet, I think, in this one, finally. It's taken a while to get to that stage. We'll look at the stark difference between the two AD carries. I think that's a, a, a very good comparison mm. to make here. One, two, four with 164 CS for Genja. Compare that over to the 215 plus 825 on the kills. Look at the items in there as well. I mean, just just a massive, massive, a massive difference between the two. And just just how far does that get in that tier that got us stepping behind in terms of item builds? It's instantly gold effectively wasted until you're looking to hit 30, 40 minute mark now effectively probably for Genja. Now he's got the Bloodthirster in there. Well, that's great. He's got a BF Sword, which also matches Pushu. But he's got a Last Whisper, a QSS and a Zeal on top of that. He's massively ahead. And that's why, of course, in terms of kills, yeah, he's got a big advantage. But the fact is, he hasn't had that early damage. That's a great arrow to catch him off. They're going to start it on. Chain of Corruption comes out. 
Crit crescendo follows it through. Peke comes in, locks everyone up, pops his ultimate down. Voidal goes down. He gets caught out just at the back. We saw Darian also going down to push him. That's his ninth kill of the game as they flash in. Alexic gets massacred. He gets taken down. It's Yellow Pete, a uh, Yellow Star, sorry, that takes that one down. Yellow Pete would be that delighted would be if he could get it, especially if he was playing Shen as well. But it is so as wheeling his way back, starting everything off. It seems to be working out wonders. There are two members of Fnatic very low on health here, but it's going to be the Baron for Fnatic. Yeah, Baron for Fnatic. There's nothing that Gambit can do to stop this one. They're not even trying. Genja is going to head down to that bottom lane, get himself some farm back, but they are going to lose this Baron, and that's going to put them... I mean, look at the gold already. It's now 13,000 difference after 28 minutes of the game. I think after 28 minutes of the last game, there was about a 200 gold difference, which just shows you how crazy this one's been, and this whole switch around of things going on, Working out very nicely here for Fnatic. See Darian on the uh, screen there in the bottom left, just having a quick drink of water. It's not over just yet. Keep yourself hydrated. Uh, there might be a little bit more to play in this one up until now, but I mean, look at Yellow Star. We, we have to talk about this because it is a massive change for Fnatic. The guy who was AD carry that moved to support, that is now apparently the new top laner. We still need clarification on why this all happened or how this all happened. He's 519, 200 CS, Trinity Force in there with that Sunfire Cape and a second uh, Giant's Belt as well. He's absolutely flying right now. He's done a great job. I mean, look at the timings on his ultimate as well. That three man uh, kills, uh, three kills that they got in the bottom lane earlier on. He did brilliant on. I mean, he's only using Stan United, which kind of may maybe builds it up to a little bit more than it was, but he's been spot on with those ultimates every single time. He's farmed well, and he's just generally done what you'd expect out of someone in the top lane from a team like Fnatic. It's, it's great. And Soaz seems to be enjoying himself wheeling around. We hear that overdrive kicking in every time on the uh, Piltover Custom Blitzcrank as he has it seemed effectively had this Oracle the whole game, it seems. <laughs> I don't remember not seeing him with the Oracle. Oh, piercing Arrow landing again and done. They have got good heal here. Gambit, and if they can stick around, they've got good sustain to hold off, but the question is, can they hold off? Can they keep that turret there? And it doesn't seem so. They're going to have to wait a while for the next minion wave to conga line in there, but Yellowstar are actually going to try and tank this one up, push you, putting the damage down, and again, that turret doesn't have a lot of hit points left here. And those piercing arrows, they're doing a chunk of damage every time they manage to go through. Static shift was completed as well by Pushu, so those waves, they're getting cleared out that little bit quicker. And they just need a couple of shots from Pushu. There goes the tight there goes the ultimate. They're going straight on towards Alex, who is going to go down without even using his ultimate from this one. There is Darian taking the pressure now. He will fall. Three men left. Grab comes in onto Voidal. He couldn't have Voidal that one. And now Diamond is a final man left alive, running back off towards the Nexus. Fnatic really only losing a bit of health from that one. They're going to take this in here and Pushu turning around there. The claw came out from Peke. Couldn't quite snipe off. Fnatic might finish it right here. Well, they may well go straight for it, and why not? They've got the damage. It looks like Fnatic going to take down the Nexus turret and go 3-0 to zero over Gambit Gaming. They've pulled out something new, but it seems to have backfired horribly because Fnatic are going to take victory once again and the top spot in the LCS for Europe over a victorious Gambit. I'm a little bit lost for words right now because that was... The, the picks and bans were already a little bit too much for my heart to handle. Then the fact that it took us about two minutes to realize that Yellow Star wasn't actually playing Blitzcrank was like, well, wait a minute, he's actually on Shen this game. Brilliant performance overall from his team, moving so as towards that Blitzcrank. Yellow Star's got that, that swagger bar, he's like, yeah, I can play top as well, no problem with that one. And not the best game for that man on your screen there, Void. He. I mean, you can't really analyze too much into what he's done there because, quite frankly, he didn't really have much chance uh, coming into that game. Overall.